thank you for joining us. I'm Toke Eich, the director of the Keynes Fund in Cambridge. And my guest today is Noriko Amana Pantino. We're here to talk about your new Keynes Fund project, the effect of affirmative action on workers' outcomes. What is your research question? In this project, together with my co-authors, Juliana Ramburu and Zara Contractor, both graduate students at Yale, we aim at answering the questions what are the effects of affirmative action regulation on workers' labor market outcomes? And we're going to place particular attention on their earnings paths and on their subsequent employment probabilities. And just to be precise about the affirmative action that I am talking about, uh, we analyze the primary affirmative action regulation in employment in the United States, which is called Executive Order 11246. And this was uh, implemented in um, 1965 in order to equalize labor market outcomes across different racial groups and it mandates uh, any firm that holds a federal contract and any of its establishments to do efforts to employ women and minorities at rates that are at least proportional to a local and qualified labor force. The moment the contract ends, the firm is no longer regulated by affirmative action. And so over time, firms can go in and out of affirmative action regulation and at any point in time, just to give you a sense of the magnitude of this policy, it's estimated that about one in five workers work at a firm that is under executive order 11246. And um, the efforts that the firm is required to, to put in order to comply with affirmative action are actually determined by the size of the, of the contract, the, the dollar value of the contract and the size of the firm so specifically, any firm that has a federal contract is required to include equal employment opportunity uh, signs in any employment ads, which say, quote, we are equal employment opportunity employers, all qualified candidates will uh, receive consideration in employment without regard to race, color, religion, or sex. However, if the firm has a contract of a value that is above $50,000 and the firm has more than 50 employees, then in order to comply with affirmative action, the firm must also develop an affirmative action plan, which uh, establishes how the firm is going to achieve certain employment targets in order to improve the diversity of its workforce. And moreover, it is on these firms that there is a yearly compliance evaluation of a fraction of, uh, of employers. So this stricter version of affirmative action is the one that my co-authors and I want to analyze. And so with all of these ingredients on the table, um, the research question that my co-authors and I want to answer is again, what is the effect of this stricter affirmative action regulation on workers' labor market outcomes? And we're going to uh, focus in particular on uh, those workers that have worked at regulated firms, where by regulated firms, I mean firms that have a contract that is about $50,000 and that have more than 50 employees. What are you looking at that hasn't been addressed before? Well, Given that the regulation was established 56 years ago, of course, there is a very large literature looking at the effects of affirmative action. However, most of this literature focuses on the effects that the regulation has on employment rates at the establishment level, and it doesn't really tell us what happens on any worker level outcomes. And one of the reasons for that is that aside from a few very small surveys that were conducted by researchers analyzing affirmative action, we didn't really have any data set that contained workers' employment histories together with the affirmative action regulation status of their employers. And so one of the biggest challenges and contributions of this project is to impute affirmative action status of workers' employers using establishment level data on federal contracts, and then linking that together with uh, workers' employment histories from the uh, longitudinal employment household dynamics data, um, which was developed and is safeguarded by the US Census Bureau. And the reason why my co-authors and I want to put together this very hard to build data set in order to look at the worker side is 
that the literature looking at the employment level outcomes does tell us that the policy, affirmative action, does actually quite a good job in equalizing employment rates between minorities and women and non-minorities at the establishment level. So likely there are big effects also on workers. But what we want to know besides the fact that this policy affects workers is whether, for example, affirmative action improves uh, minorities' labor market opportunities upon working at a regulated firm above and beyond what they would have gotten had they worked at any other firm. We also want to know whether all minorities benefit the same or whether, for example, it's only educated minorities, the ones that are uh, benefiting mostly from this policy. And last, we want to know uh, which mechanism is the one that leads to this policy to equalize employment rates between minorities and non-minorities? Is it through uh, promotions? Is it through new hires? And all of these are, are open questions that my co-authors and I are really looking forward uh, to answer. How is your research innovative? Well, the literature analyzing affirmative action identifies the effects of affirmative action by essentially comparing uh, federally contracted establishments with non-federally contracted establishments. A uh, recent and very influential example of, of that is the recent paper by Conrad Miller in uh, the uh, AJ Applied Econ 2017. But the thing is that when an establishment acquires a federal contract, it often faces also an increase in labor demand and that really complicates the identification of the effects of affirmative action because the firm is inevitably going to change the composition of its workforce because it's going to hire more workers. And so to circumvent this problem, uh, my co-authors and I uh, innovate in, in one dimension, which is that um, we exploit the discontinuity of the policy exactly at the, at the $50,000 threshold. And instead of comparing uh, federally contracted establishments with non-federally contracted establishments, we uh, compare firms that are just above and just below the $50,000 threshold. And we've made several checks confirming that firms do not play around this $50,000 threshold in order to avoid being regulated. And we've also checked that firms just above and just below the threshold are similar in observables, in particular in terms of age, size, the length of the federal contract, um, the proportion of firms that are owned by a minority, uh, the industry, and so on. And on top of that, we've also checked that there are no other policies that kick in at the $50,000 uh, amount of the value of a contract. And so all of these checks support the assumption that the differences in workers' outcomes at the $50,000 threshold are driven by affirmative action. And hence, the causal effects of affirmative action on workers' outcomes, say on earnings, are captured by the jump in earnings exactly at the $50,000 threshold. Um, of course, this analysis is, uh, is done on uh, workers who were working at the firm before the firm got regulated because it could be that workers self-select into regulated firms, and we're still developing our empirical analysis for uh, those uh, new hires in order to uh, complete this empirical analysis. But on top of that, our project innovates in using our empirical findings in order to develop a model that tells us also the mechanisms through which um, affirmative action affects employment and earning dynamics of workers. What are the wider social issues that your research address? Understanding the mechanisms through which affirmative action operates is really important to tell us what works in terms of policies to tackle discrimination issues. And hopefully our research is going to be an important input for future policy development. Mm -hmm.